Hi guys, so in today's video, um, I just want to share some new items that Spellbinders has on their site, and some have been there, but um, I've been curious to try them out, so I will be sharing that with you today. So we have some Better Press inks, some Glimmer foils in black and white, which I have been looking forward to playing with. I have reinkers for the new inks, and then I have some Glimmer Specialty cardstock. And uh, these items were sent free of charge for my review, and of course, all opinions are my own. And any links I have in the description box will be affiliate links, which means I'll make a small commission if you're purchased items to those links. So thank you for using those if you like. Um, again, you also get 10% off the site if you are a current Spellbinders member in any of the clubs. I mean, I remember back in the day I was just like club member in like the Stamp Club or possibly just when the bossing came out that, you know, they're $10 and then you get 10% off and I'm pretty much my orders were always $100 or more. So like <laughs> it would basically be a free club, right, at that price point. So that was fun. Um, but anyway, so uh, what I'm going to do is just show you the new colors. We'll try them out with some plates and then the glimmer stuff with the glimmer plates. So. I feel like Better Press and the Glimmer kind of go hand in hand, and um, you can use your Better Press plates in the Glimmer to f hot foil with. Um, Spellbinders has been testing that out because obviously it's a new uh, product, so you can only test it so much to know like how well the plates will hold up over time with that heat on them, but so far so good. I have not actually done that yet, but there are other YouTubers who have tried that out or other people <laughs> with videos or just Instagram or however that have tried it, I'm sure. So you can check that out. Um, but you cannot put your foil press plates into the better press, okay, because they're thicker and you just don't want to damage your machine. So um, they do go better press into glimmer, but not the glimmer plates into the better press. I hope that makes sense. Um, okay, so a couple things. New colors, and I'm super happy to have these, especially with Christmas coming up, because um, I was using my Better Press plates, and I'm like, oh, I wish I had a red, you know? So we have strawberry, which is like the red. We have leaf green. We have azalea, which is a gorgeous pink. Uh, hydrangea. We are going to try out all the colors like I did initially with the Better Press, so you can see the different colors. Apricot, it's like a peachy pink. Clay, which is like a lighter orangey brown. Tuscan, love it. Uh, coastal, it's a blue. I just remember this name, the same Tuscan Sun, I think, one of the new paper colors, and they're just so pretty. And then they have reinkers for all of them, guys. Now, I showed you how to use your reinker. It's no big deal. You just take your little pad and just kind of, I just go back and forth until it sucks it in, and then that's about it. If it's too juicy, maybe you're going to get it all over your plates, you know. So um, just add what you think your, uh, well, it, well, it kind of sucks in pretty quickly. Let's just say it that way. Um, so it's like the Tuscan reinker, you know. So again, reinkers for all of them. And then um, that's that. And I would probably use those with regular paper, you know, with some thick paper or the um, cotton based paper that uh, Spellbinders has for better press. Over here, I do not have the black or the white. I've never tried them. So we have the Glimmer Foil, and this is a, a pack of both of them. They, I believe they sell them separately also. So there's opaque black and white. So we'll try that out. Obviously, the white with some other paper that's not just the white paper. But um, we have this guy. And then the Glimmer Specialty Cardstock. Now, I always tell you guys when you Glimmer or any hot foil that you might do, just use the smoothest paper you have, right? I like thicker papers and I like very smooth papers and I mean you can glimmer ribbon and all kinds of other things but this is their glimmer specialty cardstock which I would like to try out. It says it is 76 pounds so you know if 110 pounds like extra heavyweight paper you have 85 pound that's heavyweight-ish so this one's between like just kind of inexpensive cardstock you know where it's thicker than like layering weight but it's not quite 85 pounds and then up so it's 76 pounds so it's between those weights so we'll try this out today of course so uh, what I'm going to do is grab some better press plates so we can try out the inks and then we'll move on to the glimmer okay so I will be right back. So I chose this um, die set it's the one with all the different sentiments always and forever so I mean it's just thanks a million handmade for you you're my everything welcome little one it's everything right happy birthday we got it going on right here so what I'm gonna do is I think use two colors at a time and then just run this through a few times now not that way maybe this way I don't know if I need to spare this little piece of paper I don't really know that it's gonna work for me for something else so I'm just going to open up my better press pop that down in the center it is upside down and that's okay um, let's start with let's go 
with these guys. Oh, I should tell you the name. This one's called Flower Garden, and this one's called Desert Sunset, which I love. Um, you know, I haven't really played around using these on colored papers, but I'm sure it's going to come out just as beautifully. I don't think I usually am like white or cream colored, you know, bisque porcelain. Um, so, okay, let's start with strawberry. And again, as you're putting these down, it's kind of like a a motion where you're tapping but also kind of going like this <laughs> and I'm gonna do half of them maybe in this red since I got to this one I'll do that and I'm just being careful as far as getting that on there okay so that's the red strawberry and then this one is leaf and I got a little bit on here but I can wipe that down I'm going to kind of do that a little bit differently so I know I'm in my area that I need to be in and I am using the cotton paper and that is porcelain. I'll do them all on the white paper just so you can really get a good idea of what the color looks like. And hello, I didn't start with this silly girl. Okay, put this up here and put this here. Just a couple of them. And you can pop this on here. However, you guys, I am loving the better press. I just, I like the look of it. It's very elegant. I like the way it presses in there and then you have your beautiful sentiments or image or whatever it is that you're doing. Again, this does not touch the surface until you actually start running it through. This kind of squishes down and I'm gonna give it a nice push. And I always keep all three shims that the machine came with underneath the uh, chase. Is that called chase? I can't remember. Look at that. Pretty, pretty. So super green, festive, super red festive. I'm going to do the same thing with all of them. So let me just take this. Oh, uh, you know what? I misplaced something. Um, I'm going to cut down some paper so we have it. But what I was going to say is I usually just wipe this off with like a terry cloth towel or um, like a chamois kind of thing. You can use whatever is cleaner that you like to use. The Ranger ink cleaner I need to get. And as you can see, this thing is well loved. I've been <laughs> using this quite a bit. So the next uh, combo I'll do is the azalea and the hydrangea and um, just like what you just saw me do and I'll be right back. I was just doing the same thing, coloring half and half of that plate. Um, what I noticed, the first one that on the red strawberry, a little something got reactivated, like that dark piece right there, which must have been like maybe some darker ink that I had on that plate before. So I just grabbed some alcohol and a um, one of those little fiber kind of cleaning rags. What are they called? Microfiber, I guess. And um, 
just use that and it cleaned up really nicely. Actually, it even took some of the ink off that I had on here before, but I don't know if it's going to mess with the um, lines, the grid lines, so I didn't really do that, but I did see that it was coming away. I just didn't take the time to actually try to really rub this down, but it did take off some of the ink that was just sitting around there. So I had mentioned before you can use alcohol because it's basically um, archival ink and it breaks down with alcohol. So anyway, um, but I did that very carefully. So um, leaf and strawberry. And then we have hydrangea and azalea. Very light, beautiful color there. Uh, apricot. And if I can show you how those are different, apricot, azalea, and strawberry. This one's a little more peachy, that one's a little brighter pink, and then that one's more of a red. Clay, again, beautiful kind of reddish brown. I love that. And then over here we have coastal and Tuscan. Tuscan has that beautiful kind of goldenrod color to it, and then uh, coastal. A lighter blue, but not as bright as like hydrangea. Hope you can see the difference there. So what I'm gonna do with these guys, of course, is just cut them out with the dye. And so I'll just run them all through so we'll have that. And then we'll do something with the, um, oh, it's so funny. I always go like this and then I'm like, nope, that's not quite right. Cause these, the top and the bottom one are almost the same size, but basically you're gonna look through that and pair them up, you know, in a way that matches all of them, of course. Um, so it's basically like this. And I really just pay attention to where I have them, you know, left and right, of course, but also top to bottom. And so whenever I find this spot that I think is good, like I can go a little bit more up there. Um, that looks pretty good, maybe a little higher. Um, put some tape, I put the tape towards the outside. I don't want it to rip up this paper because it is um, cotton based and it has different layers and it's very awesome paper, but it's delicate. So if you put it towards this way, you might pick up some of your um, paper and it just tears away that top layer. So I always put it, my die facing towards where it doesn't need to, you know, not necessarily keeping that piece on the negative part. So I'll run all these through and we'll have all those pretty pieces. Okay, so um, as far as um, the glimmer, I should have brought that over probably I already started heating it, but I did not, so here we go. I'm gonna find a plate, like a large plate, that's like a background plate, and then we'll just finish off with some of our sentiments. So let me turn this on. We are going to use that new glimmer paper that I just received, and then some black paper. So as far as black paper, I will just, actually, oh man, interesting enough, I, I was just getting some paper from my stash here. But I do have my class kit that I had picked up whenever they had that glimmer workshop. And in the class kit there are, oh, sorry guys. <laughs> um, I believe this is still available, but it has um, this here. And it has pearlescent papers and all kinds of pretty stuff. Now I haven't tried pearlescent paper in here before. So I'm not sure if they were here to to work on or to matte layer with, but let's try it. Why not, right? This pearlescent black paper. Okay, so we have that. And then we're going to use some of the other papers. It's so funny because I was like, oh, I haven't used it before, but there was some in the class kit. Hello. <laughs> oh, I will show you this class kit also has a set of um, words with the same kind of, you know, thing going on as what I just showed you with the better press. Um, but it's different, obviously, the style and the wording. But, oh, well, we do have this background piece. That's not what I was thinking about doing. I want a larger plate, but this one does have that cute um, flower bunch there. Also comes with some rhinestones and then the um, essential hex gems. And I believe a couple other items. Let me see. Oh, yeah, so the plate that goes with the hexy gems. Very good. Okay. And it comes with a ton of foil. <laughs> but today we're using the black and the white foil. So, we will use that fancy paper. And I'm gonna let this warm up. I'm gonna go look for a plate that's kind of larger. We're gonna use that paper and we're gonna use the glimmer paper that I just received and that's perfect. So we can use the white and the black um, stuff. So, ooh, I'm gonna kinda cut in here. Um, again, just whatever paper you're using, the smoothest, to me, smoothest paper um, 
I always go with the heavier cardstock. Now this one does say it's 76 pound, like we discussed at the beginning. So as it says, it's a mid-weight cardstock. I'm going to trim this down to, yeah, it, actually it feels even thinner than middle weight, but it is very, very, very smooth. So I'm going to trim this down to four and a quarter by five and a half, and then grab, like I said, a plate, and I'll be right back. Okay, guys, I actually have some items from the stylish oval collection that I hadn't gotten to because I was waiting to get in some dies I had ordered, like the nesting dies. So I actually do have the stylish oval with the layered stencils, but we have this plate here. It has a big boy. I'm just going to grab it without having to bring out this whole thing. This guy. So we can use that. Uh, I do have also this other large plate too, but we'll just use the same one on both. Um, and, but that does also pair with this um, layering stencil so you can color in your little bird and everything else. Maybe I'll do that off camera, but I think it, I just was going to get moving on this and do this part of it, you know? Um, okay. So let's see here. We just need to cut down some foil. I'm just quickly going to use the little foil cutter. So it takes a little getting used to. I don't think I use it the right way, to be honest, but I just uh, put my foil on there and let it flatten out and um, just kind of cut it that way. I don't know how to explain it. I think you're supposed to be actually using the measurements and all that. But for me, what I do is I'll put this on here. A little bit lower down because there is like a guard here that doesn't let you go all the way up and just kind of eyeball how much of this I need and again just give yourself enough to cover the plate right so if I do that I just place this here kind of to where I need it to be about there and then I just check again <laughs> yeah that's like perfect right there and then I just grab this. And it just helps it from like being all wild <laughs> on you. So I'll do the same thing with the black. Okay. And then this one has a lot of static electricity, so I'll put that there. All right, guys. And then I always like to build my my um, stuff up here. Oh, I was gonna say this. I don't even know how to explain it. When I put it on my guillotine. It just like cut like butter. Like it. It didn't have resistance. I guess you know when you go to cut, like you just you know, you're cutting and. I don't know how to explain it. It just glides over like that area, so that's really nice. Um, maybe I'll trim this down afterwards, but these are four and a quarter by five and a half panels. And I like to put my foil, which in this case is kind of like a matte foil, but down and build it over here. And then I plop it onto my uh, surface over here, but some people like to build over here. If you're building over here, put your plate down first with the image facing you. Put your paper with the rough side I guess on this one because there's no silver side the rough side facing see how that's rough or matte and that's shiny so the matte side should be facing you and then your paper on top but since I'm doing it this way I'm just going to take this guy and place that on there again I might run this back through with a die or for right now I'm just gonna eyeball that and make sure that we're pretty straight you know but put that right in the center and then I put a little bit of tape so you can move this without it shifting. Um, and then we'll take this whole thing and turn it over on top of this. So your metal plate should always be touching the surface, not paper touching the surface, because all you're going to do is emboss. Um, and then, yeah. <laughs> So I always put this on here. That's what I like to do. Some people don't like to do that because they feel it shifts. So you don't have to put this on, but I like to. And then I press timer. I'll let it go. And then I usually give it an extra two or three seconds just for good luck, good measure. <laughs> and then I run it through my uh, Platinum 6. It can go through a big shot. Uh, it can probably go through most um, systems that you can run th uh, steel roll dies through. But um, again, the glimmer, the actual Spellbinders glimmer. Uh, they do have a list of compatible, 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 <laughs> compatible machines. Okay, I'll be back when this light turns off. It stops blinking. It doesn't turn off. It just stops blinking. It lights up. Stay solid. Okay. I lit up solid. So I'm going to remove that and bring this over. I just kind of slowly run it through my Platinum 6.
Oh my gosh, you guys, this is so pretty. Of course, when I'm doing this, I'm like, did I put it facing the right way? Ooh, I don't want that touching my foil. That's very hot. <laughs> wow. That is absolutely gorgeous. Oh my, I don't even know how to tell you. Let me put this back on here. How that looks. Like, it's just so matte and so soft. Like, oh my god, I, I don't even know what, what to say. <laughs> like, it's so pretty. You guys. It's very much a better press look because it's not shiny, right? Um, and then, of course, the plates do give you some emboss on there. Wow. I am super impressed. That, I don't even know how to tell you but see in the back maybe you can see like the little sheen of the design I don't know that's gorgeous wow okay um, I did want to show you in the meantime I was cutting these guys out and look how cute they just fall out for the most part <laughs> a couple stayed over here but there you go all right I will be back platform ready and I'll just do the same thing with the black paper I'm gonna bring this guy over and it's cooled off. Now this guy you can definitely use another plate and I believe we have a plate that's like oval-ish, maybe a little bit smaller. And you can get that same design put onto your paper. There's um, that plate that I just showed you that's like a gem shape. There's rectangular, square ones, all these different shapes. Okay, so this guy I'm just gonna prep it the same way. All right, so we have our paper. We have the shiny side facing up because <laughs> we're going to push our color into our paper and then this guy and I'm doing this in the air because um, that's all I have right now <laughs> like right there okay and pop it on here and I will put my plates and I'll press timer and I'll run it through just like we did and I'll be back let's check this guy out you can see it came through really nicely. Oh, it just came away on its own. Look at that. Let me take this off of here. And I'll use my little tool to pick up this boy over here. And I guess that's all I'm doing today, but wow. So we have that shimmer paper. You have that beautiful white image on there. Yeah, I mean, what can I say? I gotta tell you, the glimmer, I'm 99.8. 5% of the time it comes out perfect like there's no guessing you just <laughs> leave the lights follow the lights you know instead of doing your own timing your own heat and all these different things it, and it just works I, I, that's gorgeous oh my gosh okay I'll be right back so that's the last set that I ran through there and um, what I'm gonna do is just find the plates I, I believe I have die cutting uh, stylish ovals the nesting guys so maybe I'll cut one or both of them with that I'm not sure but um, I will be right back and me go grab those so we have a mound a huge pile of all these wonderful sentiments all these pretty colors um, and then I brought these out because I want to show you. I have both of these that I picked up recently, um, maybe the last month or so. And it's the Essential Modern Ovals and the Essential Stylish Ovals. And I want to show you the difference because this one's kind of a longer oval. They don't really nest together. Um, I mean, I guess you could try, but no. <laughs> it's just this one's thinner and this one's a little bit more wider. But this is the one that goes with the Stylish Ovals. So I'll probably just cut down maybe one of them, maybe trim the other one down. I don't know. But... Um, if I do that, I want to get one that's large enough to cut the the image. Ooh, good work on that one. So let's say that one, and then maybe one to put a background piece. That's really close. Maybe the next one up. There's a lot of dies in this set, which is really nice. Um, or there are a lot of dies. Let's go with this one. Yeah, and I'll just cut that from a complimentary color. Maybe a color that if I'm pulling in like, you know, you're in my thoughts or something with that light blue, maybe a light blue behind there. I don't know. Um, but I'll do that. And the other one, I'll probably just trim it down and I'll be right back. So I chose a pink and then I'll just choose a pink sentiment. Let's get that little tape off of there. Oh. So all I'm gonna do is just glue this down to that pink base and then we'll get on our card. And this one I just cut down to four and eighth by five and three eighths because that's the kind of matte layer I like. And so I'll just glue this down. This card is kind of weird. Let's use this side. Okay, so I'll glue that down. I'll glue the pink to the, the white topper to that pink base and I'll be right back. So really simple 
clean. If you want more texture, you know, definitely you can do some embossing, um, like on this pink piece or maybe another background piece. I wanted it to be flat because this paper is just like, I don't know how to explain it. It's just so silky and um, I didn't want to have bumps underneath it, basically. So that's kind of why I went with this in mind. So it is very flat <laughs> on this one. Um, let's see here. That looks good. Sure. Okay, and maybe thanks a million. Let's do that one. And so on the back of these guys, I'm just going to pop some little squares. And then I'll do the same thing for this one. This one's just pretty like this. And I'll just choose one of these sentiments to pop on there. Oh, maybe with the red, huh? With that monochromatic black and white. Red can pop really nicely. So I'll be right back. I'm just gonna put some dimensionals on the back of these guys. Hey guys, so we have thanks a million. I'm gonna pop it right down here. Looks good. There's a card there with all the different colors we can play with here. And then this one simply with that beautiful shimmer paper. And we'll put it like right there. Congratulations. And I pulled out some of my um, little color gems, just whatever you might have that you might want to pop on there. Um, just, you know, add a little something more of texture. So I will probably do that on this card and I'll leave this one just the way it is. So thanks for watching guys. Again, just trying out the brand new colors um, and then the black and the white foil, which I am super in love with. I will have to stock up on that next time I place an order. So thanks for watching. I'll have images coming up. I'll have the links in the description box and I'll see you all at the next one. Bye now.